All right, welcome to the San Francisco Public Library Government Information Center. Today we are proud to bring you Bay Area Legal Aid's presentation, Know Your Rights, Medi-Cal, Medicare, and Covered California. I will begin with the land acknowledgement. Welcome to the unceded land of the Ohlone tribal people. We acknowledge the many Raimatush Ohlone tribal groups and families as the rightful stewards of the lands on which we reside. San Francisco Public Library is committed to uplifting the name of these lands and community members from these nations with whom we live together. SFPL encourages you to learn more about first person culture and land rights and are committed to hosting events and providing educational resources on these topics. A little bit of housekeeping for you. Audio, video, and chat will be monitored and recorded for quality assurance and record keeping. By default, all participants will be muted and video turned off uh, to avoid distractions during the presentation. To submit a question or comment, you may select the chat button at the bottom of your screen and type in your message. And alternatively, you may save your questions until the end of the program. At that time, you may utilize the raise hand function and the presenters will call on you. And once again, welcome to the San Francisco Public Library. I am pleased to hand it over to Amy Freeland from Bay Area Legal Rights, Bay Area Legal Aid. Excuse me. Amy, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Okay, I am Amy Freeland from Bay Area Legal Aid's Health Consumer Center. And um, there we go. Um, the Health Consumer Center is an advice hotline. Um, we provide free assistance on healthcare coverage and healthcare access issues. Um, most of what we provide is legal advice um, tailored to the situation for who is calling us. Um, but we also occasionally do brief services or even extended representation, including representing people at state fair hearings. Um, we, we provide services to people in any languages. Um, if it's not a language that we have a staff person who speaks, then we get an interpreter on the line. And we serve residents of um, the seven um, main Bay Area counties and um, our services are free and we don't have any kind of income cap like a lot of other legal services program has. So we, we serve people at all income levels. And down here, we put some, um, some the, the actual hotline number um, and our hours. We're open Monday through Thursday, nine to five, Friday, nine to one. And all of the people who answer the phone, we're all attorneys. Um, so um, some people wonder about that, but we all are, all our attorneys who answer the phone. Um, some of the things that we do that we advise or help people with are eligibility, um, enrollment, in, enrollment and disenrollment issues, um, access to the medically, medically necessary services, um, claims denials, gender affirming care, um, in-home supportive services, which is IHSS, um, among other issues with Medi-Cal and Dentical, Cover California, Medicare, and private health insurance programs. Um, and medical, we do advise on medical debt um, and um, some of these other issues as well. Um, so we're going to, going to talk about the Affordable Care Act briefly, um, generally, because the Affordable Care Act kind of um, gives a framework for a lot of the other programs and how, how they're offered um, at this point in time. And we'll also talk about Medi-Cal, Cover California, and Medicare. So the affordable air, the, uh, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, um, which is also known as Obamacare, um, was passed into law in March of 2010, and it expanded Medi-Cal um, to a much greater um, a greater group of people, and it created um, a health benefit exchange, which in California that would be oops, um, that would be Cover California, and um, it created a system where people get subsidies for their private health insurance. Um, okay, and, and um, 
yeah, it, it um, created more consumer protections than were previously available for consumers of, um, you know, of health, health insurance in the past. Um, so all marketplace and um, uh, Medi-Cal plans must have, must offer um, these 10 essential benefits. Um, so those are things that, that's kind of the benchmark for, um, for a plan that's, um, that is um, offered on the marketplace through Cover California or um, through you know public health programs. Um, under the Affordable Care Act, it created a, a mandate that um, individuals can't be denied insurance coverage because of pre-existing conditions, which has been a huge benefit to a lot of people in the community. And um, yeah, there there are lots of uh, lots of rules that have been added about. Um, you know how how much they're allowed to charge people for um, for health insurance premiums, including based on age, um, and it ended annual and lifetime caps on a lot of benefits, and it um, allowed adults up to 26 to be included on their parents' private insurance. And there's several other um, other um, parts of the Affordable Care Act that expanded um, healthcare access to people. So um, so the Affordable Care Act um, coverage spectrum. Um, what this is, what this map is kind of showing is that um, so for people who are up to 138 percent of the federal poverty level, those people um, qualify for um, generally qualify for Medi-Cal. Um, in the past, Medi-Cal was really um, or Medicaid programs in general were, were more limited to people with disabilities and, and children. Um, and so now this is kind of it, the Affordable Care Act expanded um, Medi-Cal access, Medicaid access, Medi-Cal access um, to um, to anyone under this um, this threshold as long as they they meet all of the other non non income um, requirements as well. And um, so for people whose incomes are above 138 percent of the poverty level but below 600 percent of the poverty level, those folks are able to get some premium assistance with um, a health insurance, a private health insurance plan that you can get off of the covered California marketplace. Medi-Cal is California's Medicaid program. So I, you know, I use those interchangeably a bit in this presentation, but Medi-Cal is um, Medicaid in California. It's a federal and state funded health insurance program for low income people. It's a combination federal and state program and it's administered by um, California's Department of Healthcare Services and eligibility is determined at the county level, um, except when um, for some people have Medi-Cal that's based on um, their SSI, if they receive SSI benefits, um, then that would be determined by the Social Security Administration instead. Um, so there are certain programs um, that, so there are many, many different Medi-Cal programs. Um, some Medi-Cal eligibility is linked to um, people's eligibility for other public benefits programs like SSI, like I just mentioned, CalWORKs. Um, there is a health, um, a Medi-Cal um, program for um, adults under 26 who have aged out of the foster care system um, and um, adoption assistance. There's some Medi-Cal programs that are kind of just linked to that. Um, and um, so that for this, uh, for Medi-Cal, um, essentially, um, yeah, essentially uh, most people, as long as they are income qualified would qualify for, um, you know, for some Medi-Cal program, although we'll talk about some of the immigration restrictions um, in the future um, in this program as well. But um, yeah, there are lots and lots of people can qualify for a Medi-Cal program, but they do need to be a California resident um, or have the, um, you know, intent to reside in California. So, um, so immigration, uh, Medi-Cal immigration criteria, um, most people, as long as they're income qualified, can receive some form of Medi-Cal benefits. Um, full scope Medi-Cal benefits are, are available to um, qualified immigrants, um, and that is a, a federal definition, um, which includes citizens, legal permanent residents, um, refugees and asylees, um, people with a U visa or, or T visa, everyone up to 26 and other qualified um, immigrants. Um, 
And a restricted scope is available to people who um, don't have a qualifying immigration status, um, but restricted scope is going to have um, a lot, um, a lot fewer benefits. It's it's generally meant to um, to to kind of work in an emergency type setting. Um, so if some to 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 deal with issues that are um, are urgent, like emergency room or um, that kind of thing. Um, so. Uh, Permanently residing under color of law, those uh, people who have pre-call status um, are eligible for full scope Medi Medi-Cal. Pre-call is not an immigration status, it's a public benefit eligibility category. But what it basically means is immigration authorities know you're here and they're not intending to begin de deportation proceedings. Um, and DACA recipients qualify under pre-call. So there are several um, main types of Medi-Cal coverage. There's free full scope, free full scope Medi-Cal that involves no cost sharing or no responsibility to pay for services, um, which means there's no premium. You don't have to pay anything when you go to the doctor, um, and it pays for medically necessary healthcare treatment when you're using a Medi-Cal um, covered provider. Sometimes. Um, Sometimes people, there are a couple programs that require a monthly premium, and that's for generally higher earners um, that still fit into um, the, the qualifications for um, programs other than the free full scope Medi-Cal. Um, it's usually people who are working with a disability or people um, when there's a child below um, 19. But the, the monthly premiums are, are usually very low, much lower than anyone um, would probably be able to find um, in a, on, a, on a private marketplace. Um, and share of cost Medi-Cal is for people who would qualify for Medi-Cal. This is specifically for people who have, um, who have um, either are over age 60, um, 64 or over, over age 64 or um, have a disability determination. And so for share of cost Medi-Cal, it's for people whose incomes are a little bit too high or a lot too high for free full scope Medi-Cal. And then there's a, a set amount that they must pay out of pocket each month before Medi-Cal coverage starts. And it's, um, it kind of acts as a, like a deductible that resets every month. Most of the time people use it when they um, are in, um, maybe some kind of residential um, setting because usually the share of cost is pretty high. Um, and so for most people, it's just, it still makes um, healthcare um, inaccessible because um, the, the share of cost compared to income is still is still really high. So um, a lot of the work that we do is, is looking to see if there's any way that we can help people avoid a share of cost because we know that if you have a share of cost, your income is probably pretty low, but um, not low enough to qualify for um, for free full scope Medi-Cal. And restrict, restricted scope Medi-Cal is free, um, but it like again, it's um, it's restricted to emergency services and pregnancy related services, and it's um, for undocumented adults who don't who don't qualify under some other category for um, for immigrants. This table right here um, is the Medi-Cal income limits um, for a household of one. Um, it, the, the income limits um, increase um, the more people that you have in your household. Um, so, you know, you add people and, and the income and, uh, limits will go up. But in general for 2021, um, the Medi-Cal, the limit for free full scope Medi-Cal um, is $1,482 a month for one person. Um, and above that amount, generally, um, you, you may qualify for Cover California plan. Um, okay, so this, this kind of gets a little, um, a little complicated, but there are two um, main types of Medi-Cal programs. And this is um, directly because of the Affordable Care Act. Um, when the Affordable Care Act expanded Medi-Cal, um, they created um, like the, the, the newish type of Medi-Cal was, um, 
called MAGI Medi-Cal, which stands for um, Modified Adjusted Gross Income. And so that just means, generally it means that the income determination is going to be made based on um, how you file your taxes. So your household is going to be determined on who, you, you know, who is a household for tax purposes, who's a dependent for tax purposes. And income is generally um, defined as how it is in um, the tax code except for the modified part, which we're going to get to, I think, in the next slide. But traditional Medi-Cal, which is non-MAGI Medi-Cal programs, these are for um, people with disabilities who are over, or who are over 65. Um, and those um, under the age blind disabled, those are some 250% working disabled program, medically need, the share of cost program, and long-term care Medi-Cal are just types of other types of non um, non magi medical programs and for everyone else, which is um, uh, non disabled people non disabled adults between 19 and 64 and um, pregnant women and children up to 19 and parent caretaker relatives those are all people those are all medical programs that fit under the magi definition and magi income counting um, system. So. Um, yeah, this is the formula for um, for determining MAGI modified adjusted gross income for um, for these programs. It's your adjusted gross income, um, which is pretty much what's the, what the income you report on your on your taxes, um, plus non-taxable social security benefits. So you so a lot of social security benefits are not counted um, as income for the for IRS purposes, but they are counted as income for um, for MAGI Medi-Cal programs uh, or for all Medi-Cal programs. Social security benefits are counted. So your income um, would be your adjusted gross income. So you just your regular income plus your um, non-taxable social security depend um, benefits and tax exempt interest and foreign earned income. So things that may not count on um, on your IRS taxes may count for MAGI Medi-Cal. And there is um, this MAGI Medi-Cal programs have no asset test. That means that someone could have, you know, could live in a, a you know, multi-million dollar mansion and if they as long as they make as long as their income is below 138 percent of the poverty level they would still qualify for medic um, magi medical so there's no asset test at all for this type of medical for non magi medical um, these this program is still using pre-affordable care act rules for counting income and um so that these programs have um have rules about what kind of income is, is deducted. Um, and it kind of differs depending on what um, particular Medi-Cal program it is. Um, for example, um, for age and disabled Medi-Cal, you can deduct you know, premiums that you would pay um, for a supplemental health insurance plan. So let's say you have Medicare and you pay, but you also pay, so you pay your Part B premium and you also pay $75 a month for a supplemental dental plan. You can you know, subtract that from your income for eligibility purposes. And these programs unfortunately have an asset test and that is very low, $2,000 a month for um, a single person and 3,000 for a couple. There are a lot of excluded assets. Um, so you, you, the house that you live in is an excluded asset. Um, a car that you use for transportation is excluded, but um, in general, their assets have to be less than two or three thousand dollars a month. Although I will note that I believe that within the next um, few years, the California legislature has voted to eliminate the asset tests, but for now, they still are there, so that can be a barrier for people. Um, so yeah, the house is exempt, one car. Um, yeah, the retirement accounts, um, there are specific rules about retirement, account, retirement accounts and life insurance policies. I won't get too much into that. And um, yeah, this is um, age blind and disabled Medi-Cal. They used to, um, this Medi-Cal, non-MAGI um, age blind and disabled Medi-Cal and um, the regular um, adult MAGI Medi-Cal programs used to have different income limits, but within this last year, they have made it so that um, for both 
for most adults, um, the income limit is going to be $1,482 a month for a single person, if that's your household as a single person, um, with a caveat that it could be a little higher depending um, if they meet some kind of ex exception to get into some other Medi-Cal program that might have a higher asset limit or a higher income limit. Okay. And yeah, for, for um, non-MAGI Medi-Cal, um, there's they kind of differentiate between earned and uncurrent, unearned income. And there's a formula you get, a, a de, a, there's an automatic deduction for all income. And then there's a $65 um, deduction for employment income. And then you can subtract impairment related um, expenses and um, that are related to your work or um, income related expenses, including um, transportation and uniforms if you're blind. So um, yeah, and you divide, um, yeah, so the, down here is an example. Um, so if you earn $3,000 in employment, then first they subtract the $65, which is the unearned income um, exclusion or deduction, and then you divide it in two. And so that would end up being your countable income. So your countable income is your earned income divided in half after you minus the $65 um, earned income. So that's how you calculate earned income. And then unearned income is just the amount minus a $20 deduction. So I know that that's kind of complicated and we are always happy if you don't get anything else from this presentation that um, the Health Consumer Center, we're always happy to, to give people um, more thorough advice and information about how these programs work. The 250% Working Disabled Program um, provides full scope Medi-Cal to people with a higher income limit um, than, than, um, than the normal income limit for Medi-Cal programs. And for, to qualify for the 250% Working Disabled Program, you have to have a Medi-Cal Medi or a Social Security determination of disability. And um, you have to be engaging in minimal employment. Um, but the, I think the state has um, purposefully uh, made the um, definition of employment for the Working Disabled Program be very flexible and pretty much as um, pretty much anything can count as work and any in any amount or any frequency. So we've got, we advise people who may have a little bit, um, who have, let's say disability income that's a little bit too high to qualify for free full scope Medi-Cal. We try to help people get into this program um, because it allows you to have a higher income limit and even if people are disabled, a lot of times people say, well, I'm disabled, I can't work. And that, that very well may be true, but the, the definition of work is so flexible that sometimes it might be um, babysitting your grandchildren that you maybe already do that, or that, but that someone is willing to pay you to do it, um, or filling out forms, pretty much anything, collecting cans, um, watering your neighbor's plants, um, giving someone a ride to the store, anything that someone you know is willing to pay you to do, um, as long as you can get them, the person who's paying you to do it, to you know, write a little statement that says what it is and um, how much they're paying you and how often, then that would count generally as work um, under the Working Disabled Program. And um, as I said earlier, the general income limit for um, Medi-Cal is 1,482 per month. But for the Working Disabled Program, that shoots up to $2,684 for this year. Um, which is a huge, um, there's a lot of people who are in, in that um, income level that's higher than $1,482, but less than this 2684 number, just because of um, the average amount of Social Security benefits that people get is often in between those numbers. So there are a lot of people who qualified for this program. It provides full scope Medi-Cal benefits. It usually, it has some monthly premiums, but they're usually um, very, very low. I mean, they're essentially always less than the share of costs that they would have otherwise. And um, any kind of disability-based income um, is exempt for eligibility purposes. Um, so that's not used to calculate the premium amount or the, the um, income um, limits for those programs. 
And you can also save the earned income that you get from this employment, this qualifying employment, put it in a separate bank account, and they won't count it towards your asset limit. So if you want to kind of, um, if you, you know, if you're disabled and you want to um, build up a little bit of nest e a little bit of a nest egg, then um, you can put that in a separate account and save up a little bit without it impacting um, your benefits. And this is um, just a chart for what the um, what the premiums are. So. For a lot of the people that we work with are are in that one to six hundred dollars um, limit because they're they're kind of just doing this program. They're only working in order to qualify for this full scope Medi-Cal for twenty dollars a month. Um, but yeah, you can make more, and these premiums are way for the amount of services that you get. Um, it's it's way cheaper than the share of cost would be. Okay. Um, yeah. So for for a share of costs is assigned when the countable income is over the maximum countable income um, for the other um, non magi Medi-Cal programs. Um, but your assets, in order to qualify for a non magi program, you have to have assets below the asset limit. Um, a share of costs is not an insurance premium, and like I said earlier, it functions like a monthly deductible. Um, which is the um, a cap on the amount that you have to pay out of pocket per month, and then after that, Medi-Cal will step in and pay the rest. Um, but if you don't, you don't have to pay your share of costs every month. Like let's say you don't use very much of your benefits in one month, you don't have to pay your share of costs every month. It's only it's just a cap on what you have to pay out of pocket. Um, but for a lot of people who, I mean, non-Magi Medi-Cal programs are 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 for people who are either um, are either on disability or are over 64. So um, a lot of times people have enough um, monthly um, expenses that it gets up to the share of costs or close to it. Um, and the share of costs restarts every month. Um, so I'm not gonna go through too much of the uh, meeting share of cost. Okay, I'll do this example. Joseph is 67, a single person, and receives $1,800 in Social Security retirement each month. His insurance is Medicare, and he pays $150 a month in Medicare Part B premiums and $60 in vision insurance. He wants to know if he can qualify for full scope Medi-Cal. And so $1,800, he would be able to subtract the $150 um, for the Medicare Part B, P, Medicare Part B premium, which would get him to $650. And then um, he could um, then deduct also the $60 um, in, um, in a vision insurance. And that would put him at, um, oh, plus the $20 automatic deduction would put him at 1,570 in countable income. And the, the limit for free Medi-Cal is 1,482, so he would be $88 um, above, above the limit. Um, so the, the county will run a calculation to assess a share of costs and it will be, it will be high. Um, the share of costs just, it doesn't, it doesn't really, um, they, they calculate the share of costs based on a formula that they developed like in the 80s or 90s and they haven't adjusted it at all. So they assume that people's cost of living is much lower than it actually is. Um, yeah, so the 600 maintenance lead, need level. Um, so his share of cost would be $970. So in this case, um, his income puts him $88 above the age blind and disabled, the, the Medi-Cal limit, um, but his share of cost would then be $970. So that, that means he would have to pay $970 before Medi-Cal would pay anything. Um, and that would be every single month. But we'll, in this situation, what we, advise people to do is to purchase a supplemental health insurance plan. Um, you know, he's already paying for vision, but now he could pay for dental. And as long as he found a plan that was valued at $88 or more a month, um, another another option is like a supple, um, Medicare has supplemental plans that um, make your um, out-of-pockets um, expenses a little bit less. And so you can get one of those instead. Um, but that you were able to then subtract that from your accountable income. So if he got a premium, uh, some kind of supplemental insurance that cost $88 or more, then it would get him um, 
free Medi-Cal as opposed to a $970 a month share of costs that he would have to meet um, before he would be eligible to have Medi-Cal pay for any of it. Um, so um, under the Medi-Cal program, um, folks are um, entitled to um, dental benefits. Um, it's it's colloquially called Dentical. I think they actually now call it Medi-Cal Dental, um, but you'll hear, hear Dentical used all the time. And it includes major uh, major dental work um, like root canals and dentures. Um, there are lots of, um, you know, there are limits about how often you can get dentures and um, when, you know, when they'll do allow you to do a, a root canal. Um, and there's a soft cap of $1,800 in covered services a year. That doesn't apply to children and it doesn't apply to pregnant, um, to, to pregnant members. Um, and there are also some ways to, um, to really get around that $1,800 cap in um, services. So it's not, it's kind of just, a, it's a soft cap we call it. And um, a lot of times um, providers, dental providers, um, will sometimes try to bill patients for like maybe um, a portion of the bill that that Medi-Cal didn't pay, and that's illegal when a when a provider, a dental provider, is um, accepts Medi-Cal for a service, then they can't bill the patient for any amount for that service. So they're accepting Medi-Cal as payment in full. And that goes for um, every provider who provides a service to a Medi-Cal patient. If they're taking Medi-Cal as payment, they cannot bill the patient directly for any kind of um, you know, contribution toward the, um, the cost of the service. Um, In-home supportive services is a benefit under Medi-Cal. It's administered by um, the California Department of Social Services, and it, it provides in-home in assistance for individuals who are aged, blind, disabled, and wouldn't, wouldn't be unable to remain safely in their homes without IHSS um, care. And it, it really, um, it provides, um, it says it provides care, but it really provides um, hours. It provides you a number of hours that you can find um, maybe someone you know, a friend, a family member, a neighbor. Um, you can find your own provider in any way, or you can also go to the county and have them provide you a list of pro potential providers. But it's people who, people who need a lot of assistance to perform daily activities. And the number of hours and the eligibility is determined um, by the county. Um, they do um, an assessment to kind of determine how much help you need at home. And you, um, if you're given a number of hours and you are unhappy with it, you think you needed more, um, then that's an appealable issue that you can take to a state fair hearing. So um, you can apply for Medi-Cal um, at CoverCalifornia.com or on MyBenefitsCalWin.org or in person or by phone. I do want to really highlight this last section, which talks about accelerated enrollment. And this isn't kind of, hasn't been talked about a whole lot um, because um, it's, it's very new, but for people who apply for Medi-Cal through CoverCalifornia.com or through the, the Cover California Telephone Service Center, um, they have a program called Accelerated Enrollment, which grants people immediate Medi-Cal benefits um, as long as it looks from the application like they will qualify for Medi-Cal. And um, so that prevents people from having to wait to get care while the county is still determining whether they really do um, qualify for Medi-Cal. So that's a really, um, a new, very new, it started January, or January, it started July 1st, 2020. Um, it's gonna be expanded to applications that are done in other ways other than Calif CoverCalifornia.com in 2023. Um, but the, the state just says it's going to take them longer to do it that way. So if it's, if, if you or someone you know needs Medi-Cal benefits quickly, um, then applying on CoverCalifornia.com is probably the best way to do it because they, they, they could have access to this um, immediate Medi-Cal benefit. Okay, Medicare. Um, Medicare is a federal health insurance program that is for people who are 65 or older or younger people um, with, um, with disabilities who have received um, SSDI or Social Security Disability. Um, insurance income for 24 months. Um, and there are also people who have instant renal disease. Um, and there are no income or assets limits. It's, a, it's an entitlement program. It's based on the, um, your work history and your work credits. Um, 
Medicare has, um, it has three main parts. Um, part A is the hospital care, um, which includes skilled nursing facility. After you have an inpatient hospital care, it doesn't cover a whole lot of other um, long-term care, but if for, um, you know, care that's right after a hosp inpatient hospital care, it does cover that. And hospice care and home health care, it pays for. And part B is like the regular, um, the regular care that you get in the course, um, you know, of your health care, like um, going to the doctor, um, tests, preventative ser services, outpatient care, ambulances are covered under Part B. And Part D is prescription drugs. Okay, and you have two options with Medicare. You can go with original Medicare, which is Part, part A and Part B and Part D. And then you, if you want to, you can also add a Medigap plan, um, which is supplemental that kind of just makes it all a little bit less expensive. Um, or you can go with option two and you can get a, a Medicare Advantage program and people call those Medicare Part C plans. And that's, um, it's kind of, you go with the health insurance company, you have, um, you know, there's a health insurance company, not, not actually Medicare that's um, paying the bills is the health insurance company. And it combines Part A and Part B and Part D into one plan. Um, so that's another option. Excuse me. Um, most people get premium three Part A once once they turn 65, or um, if they're eligible through um, through after their waiting period for Social Security disability. Um, but some people, if you just really haven't don't have a, a work history or work credits um, for a job that pays into the Medicare system, you you may not qualify for Part A, and you can buy into it, um, but it's expensive. 470 one dollar a month just for part a and then for part b um everyone has to pay a premium for it so um the standard premium for medicare is 100 or for this year is 148 dollars and 50 cents in part d um with part d prescription drug plans you they're they're all um through private um, not private, but they're through like health, like you go with a health insurance company and you pick a plan. And so the, the price of the premium depends on what plan you choose. So, you know, United um, offers a lot of, there are lots of companies that offer Part D plans um, and Kaiser offers them too, if you're a Kaiser member. Um, so across the board with Medicare, Medicare pays 80% and you pay 20% coinsurance for most covered services. So they're there stands to be a lot of um, out-of-pocket costs with Medicare as your only insurance, um, because if you're if you're on Medicare, um, you 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 may be either disabled or or an older person, in which case um, your your Medicare medical care may be pretty expensive, and having to pay twenty percent of it can be a lot of money. Um, um, so enrolling in Part A, B, and D. Um, you get when you first enroll in Medicare. There's a seven-month window where when you can sign up, and it starts the three months before you turn 65, and ends three months after you turn 65. Um, and if you qualify for a disability, seven-month period around the 25th month of your um, your SSD qualifications. Okay, Medicare savings programs. Um, these are um, these offer assistance to lower income people that help them pay for Medicare premiums and cost sharing, like copays and coinsurance. And there are several different Medicare savings programs that um, which one you might qualify for depends on um, on your income, um, and you can apply for these with with your local county office, um, like Medi-Cal office, wherever you would apply for Medi-Cal, you could also apply for these Medicare savings programs. They don't have, um, well, they have a much higher asset limit than, than would be the case for a Medi-Cal program. They're still, the income caps are pretty low, lower than for at least qualified Medicare Q&B program, which pays part A and B and all other cost sharing. So it's a pretty comprehensive program. The income limit for that is less than Medi-Cal. So the people who might want this um, coverage are people maybe who have, um, still have a low income, but have a little bit higher asset um, amount. So they might not qualify for Medi-Cal as well, because you can, um, 
you can have both Medicare and Medi-Cal at the same time. We call those dual eligibles. Um, the way it works if you're eligible for both Medicare and Medi-Cal is that Medicare pays first and Medi-Cal is secondary. So Medicare will pay 80, like 80% 80 of covered services and Medi-Cal will pay the remaining 20. Um, that is the, the remainder that would normally be the beneficiary's responsibility up to the Medi-Cal rates. Um, and it pays, Medi-Cal pays the Medicare Part B premium. Um, and it may cover, it may cover the Part A premium too, it just depends. Um, and you automatically, if you have Medicare and Medi-Cal, you automatically qualify for Part D extra help, which is um, a low income subsidy that, that covers um, premiums and deductibles for Part D prescription drug plans. Okay, so balance billing, um, I alluded to this a little bit earlier, but it is illegal for a provider to balance bill um, people who are, um, who are dual eligibles enrolled in both Medicare and Medi-Cal. Um, so you can't, if you, if they, if, if someone is eligible for both Medicare and Medi-Cal, um, the provider cannot, um, then go after the patient directly to try to get some of the costs of service back from them. Um, they must bill Medicare first and Medi-Cal first, uh, Medi-Cal second. But not all providers, um, most providers take Medicare because the reimbursement rates are higher. Not every provider is gonna take Medi-Cal. So it's important if you're a dual to, to find providers that take both Medicare and Medi-Cal. Okay, so um, does anyone have um, any questions about Medi-Cal um, or the Affordable Care Act before I move on? I know I went through that really fast. Amy, there were several questions in the chat, which um, some of them might have been answered already, um, but I can go ahead and go through those. So um, one of the participants asked, what is the actual dollar amount of income for the threshold? And I believe you answered that, that there was the, the general threshold and then there was the WDP threshold. Did you want to quickly just clarify that? Yeah, so um, it... For the most part, the income threshold, it, so it depends on the number of people in your household and um, it depends on what specific Medi-Cal program you're in. Um, so for an, a single person for 2021, generally the Medi-Cal limit is $1,482 a month. Um, it's, um, if a person is able to get into the um, working disabled program, the 250% working disabled program, it's around $2,600 a month. And that's not including the um, disability related income, um, which would count under um, other Medi-Cal programs. But there are also some Medi-Cal programs that, um, for example, um, Medi-Cal Medi for um, former foster youth up to 26 um, doesn't have any income limits at all. So there are some caveats to that. Um, that a person may qualify for a program that has um, a different income limit or no income limit. Um, I think that's the only one with no income limit. Um, but there are other um, niche programs that someone might qualify for that has a little bit higher income limit. And there may be ways that we can um, try to finagle things to get someone eligible for, um, for Medi-Cal. No guarantees, but we're, we help people kind of try to figure that out. So um, if you have specific um, questions, we would be happy if you called our, our hotline to, to help you with that. And then a lot of people are asking about the slides for the presentation and the link. And so um, I just wanted to assure everyone that these slides would be available. I think we discussed that too, so. Yeah, they are eligible. Just keep in mind that these programs change all the time. So if you're looking at the, at the slides next year, there could be, um, the income limit, the numbers will definitely be different, but other things may be different too, because these programs just constantly change. But um, I'd be happy to share it with you as like a reference point. Okay, great. And then another question was, can a dental provider decline to take an individual with Dentical? That's a tough question. So um, so a Dentical provider, so lots of most, it, it can be tricky to find a Dentical provider. There just aren't enough of them for the number of people that are on Medi-Cal. Um, technically, it gets a little bit hairy about whether a, a Medi-Cal 
uh, a dental dentist can um, dent can turn away a dental patient. Um, they do. I know. I know that they do. I'm not sure um, how how legal that is. Um, a lot of times what happens, like Medi-Cal dental reimbursement rates are really, really low for dentists, which is why a lot of dentists don't want to participate. Um, but a lot of dentists think it's worth it to just do, you know, if it's just a teeth cleaning or maybe filling a couple cavities, um, they want to participate, but they don't want to participate if it involves heavier duty dental work because they're going to get just pennies on the dollar for that. So a lot of times people will, uh, dentists will say, we'll accept a dental patient and then say, um, well, I can't do that because it's out of my area of expertise. And then they'll kind of um, push them out to someone else to try to do this specific work. And that happens all the time. Um, and it's kind of mm -hmm. hard to push to push back on it, um, but it, it definitely does happen. Okay, so then another question was about whether uh, seniors can qualify for Medicaid and Medicare, I'm assuming simultaneously. Um, yep, absolutely. And a lot okay. of people do. It's, it's, okay. um, it's really, um, really beneficial for someone to have um, Medi-Cal in addition to the Medicare because just because the out-of-pocket costs for Medicare can be very high. Um, so, yeah. And then just one more, and I'll let you keep going to the covered California piece. Um, there was a question about a California program that's ending tomorrow for new applications. Um, do you know what it's called? I don't know. Um, the, for the participant who put that in the chat, if you could elaborate on that, we'll try to get to that in the end. And um, there was also another participant who's a um, an RN case manager and wants to learn a little bit more about um, helping um, someone who's hospitalized. And it, it might be that there's, if we don't have time at the end, maybe um, calling the hotline and giving more specifics around, um, you know, specifics around the situation might be helpful. Mm -hmm. So that hotline, I'll, I'll put it in the chat a couple more times. Okay, sure. That okay, great. great. Um, Lauren P said it was on the radio today. It's a program that was started for COVID coverage. So that might be coming up in the upcoming part of the presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let us go onward. <laughs> okay. So Cover California, um, I said a little bit about this before, but it was created, um, directly, um, as, um, as part of the Affordable Care Act. And on the Cover California Exchange, this is for people who whose incomes are a little bit higher. Um, well, I mean, and you can apply for for just health insurance in general on the marketplace. And first, they check to see if you qualify for Medi-Cal, um, which would be 138% of the poverty level. That's the $1,482 for this year. Um, and if you don't qualify for that, then a, a lot of times they qualify for um, tax credits to make the premiums more affordable um, and also possibly cost sharing subsidies, which make the like um, co-pays and stuff um, and deductible more affordable. Um, and it helps you, the, the CoveredCalifornia.com um, marketplace has a, a shop and compare tool where you can kind of, you can plug in your income. And um, if you're not eligible for Medi-Cal, it will kind of give you a sense of what option health care what health plan options you have and what your net premium would be. That means after the assistance to pay for the premium would be. So you can kind of pick out based on whether you think you need a lot of medical care um, or you don't use it very often and it can kind of help you figure out what, um, what kind of plan would work best for you. Um, premium tax credits are a refundable tax credit to help low and moderate income people under 600% of the poverty level. So you may hear nationally it's 400% of the poverty level, but California specifically expanded this program to people between 400 and 600% of the federal poverty level starting in 2020. Um, so the tax credit is based on a sliding scale using MAGI income calculations. So that means looking at um, the amount that's on your, that you kind of would file on your tax return. And they can be, you can take them in advance. So like month to month that in that case, Cover California would directly pay the premium to the health plan. Um, or you can just wait and get 
a big credit when you file your taxes. Um, but you would have to be in a Cover California plan um, and found eligible for the credits in order to get the refund um, when you file your taxes. Most people get them in advance because the whole reason why you're why you are um, getting these premiums is because because health insurance is really expensive and it based on your income might be afford unaffordable for you to pay in advance or pay the full premium and then get a tax credit later. Um, but you would need to ch report any changes in income like throughout the year, because when you apply, you estimate what your income is going to be throughout the year. And then when you do file your taxes, you have to what's called reconcile. And that's where um, you, where the um, IRS kind of compares what you got to what you should have gotten. And if you got too much in tax credits, then you may have, um, you know, a debt to the IRS. So that can kind of be remedied by, um, regularly updating your income with Covered California during the year so that they can adjust the rest of your premiums for the rest of the year um, so that to try to avoid any kind of overpayment. Um, yeah, so the, the premium assistance is paid directly to um, by the federal government to the health plan. And then the enrollee just pays the health plan the difference um, between the, the premium assistance and the premium. And cost sharing reductions lower um, what the consumer pays for deductibles, co payments, and insurance. And these are um, for people whose income is 250% um, of the poverty level or below. And you have to enroll in a silver plan, which is what they call benchmark plan. Um, so you can't just enroll in the very cheapest plan that has the highest co pays and um, deductibles and then have all that paid for. You have to enroll in um, a silver, it's a sliver on there, but it is silver plan. And these are, these are only available if you buy a plan that's on the Cover California Exchange. You don't have to do it on the internet. You don't have to do CoverCalifornia.com, but you would have to get a Cover California plan. And these are the tiers of the health plans. Um, the bronze plans have the lowest premium but highest out-of-pocket costs, and platinum is the inverse. It has the highest monthly premiums with the lowest out-of-pocket costs. Um, and those percentage are the actuarial values. So the total um, covered average cost for the um, covered benefits that the plan actually would pay for. Okay, normal. Um, Normal open enrollment happens during the open enrollment period, which in California happens in the late fall. Um, the California open enrollment period is always different than the federal one. Um, so make sure if you, you may see on TV or um, wherever you get your news, um, talk about um, the, the enrollment period for um, you know, marketplace health plans and Cover California's is always different. It's always longer than it is um, for the federal um, federal plans, um, for federal marketplace plans. Um, and the Affordable Care Act um, open and special enrollment rules don't apply to other health programs. They're specifically for um, Medi-Cal programs. So for Medi-Cal, or for Cover California programs, you can apply for Medi-Cal at any time. Um, during the year. So it doesn't have, and same with Medicare, it has its own rules about enrollment. So the open enrollment period is only for, it's a Cover California thing and private insurance, but they're, um, um, the specific open enrollment period for Cover California is it's, um, it's unique to its own program or its own plans. Um, so um, under Cal Cover California, if you want to enroll in a plan outside of the open enrollment period, you have to qualify for a special enrollment period, and they're, tr they're triggered by qualifying life events, um, which could be loss of health coverage, um, not due to failing to pay premiums, um, and cha household changes like a birth or adoption of a child, marriage, divorce, and it, and it applies 60 days before or after the qualifying life event. But um, I'll put an asterisk here that this has changed during the pandemic and there are changes that are still in place during the pandemic and there's some um, COVID-19 specific um, slides that we'll talk about that. Um, so we're getting to the appeals portion, um, <clears throat> excuse me, of the presentation. And Medicare appeals process has several steps. You start with redetermination, then reconsideration. Um, reconsideration um, is done by a, like a third party contractor, but it 
its decisions have the same impact as it would if it were def if it were done dir directly by um, the Medicare program. And then you have a right to um, administrative law judge hearing. And um, there are a couple of steps after that. So it's a long process. Um, doesn't doesn't happen quickly if you're um, appealing a Medicare decision. Um, health plan appeals. Um, you can um, any kind of health, oh, so not any kind of health plan, um, but most health plans that are regulated, any any health plan that's regulated by the st state of California and any um, Medi-Cal plans, anything on the covered California marketplace, um, you have the right to, f to challenge a decision that your health insurance company makes. Um, it's kind of an informal process that you have to start with before you want to, before you're able to elevate it in other ways. But within 60 days of a notice, you can, um, your health plan will have a number, a customer service number um, that will tell you exactly how you do um, a grievance or an appeal with your health plan. So um, you you can use it when your um, when your health plan denies or changes changes a treatment, or when you're just um, unhappy they didn't cover something that you thought they should cover. They're treating something as out of network that you think should be in network. Um, that's when you can file an internal health plan appeal. And if you have a plan that is regulated by the man department, the California Department of Managed Healthcare, then you can ask for an external review of the health plan's decision once you get a decision back from the health plan um, about your complaint, your grievance with the plan, internal grievance plan with the plan. Um, and the, the Department of Managed Healthcare um, has a process where they can, they oversee all Cover California plans and most but not all Medi-Cal health plans and a lot of private health plans too. Um, so in a lot of different plans, you have this opportunity to go to the, the California Department of Managed Healthcare and, and you do a, you prepare a complaint, you explain what the problem is, you can submit documents in support of it. And then the, the Department of Managed Healthcare can um, order the health plan to take a certain action or to not take a certain action. And they, there is a process to do this on an expedited basis if it's, you know, if you have an emergency and need a decision quickly. But generally, um, these complaints to the Department of Managed Healthcare are handled within 30 days for non-urgent cases and 45 days um, if, it, if it requires an independent medical review, which means that they have to get kind of a team of doctors to determine whether something is medic medically necessary. You know, whether to cover something is in network or, in, or out of network doesn't require a doctor generally. It's more of just the plan, um, a problem with your, with your health plan um, and the way that it bills or um, covers um, things. But it, maybe if you want a certain medication that they don't want to prescribe to you, that kind of thing might require um, an independent medical review, which is a team, um, a team of folks that can help determine um, whether it is medically necessary. State fair hearings, um, you have the right to challenge essentially any adverse benefit determination. And um, in most cases, you get 90, like they have 90 day period to make a decision on the case. Um, Right now, there's a 210-day um, deadline to file an appeal. If you ask for an aid paid pending before the action takes place, then you can continue to get your benefits while you're waiting for appeal dis decision. Um, Amy, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to do a really quick um, time check. Uh, it is getting close to 3 p.m., and I know you mentioned that um, you wouldn't mind uh, staying a little bit longer, especially since people do have questions. Um, so I just wanted to just get a quick verbal okay on that because we can just keep running the program um, as you know as long as we need to. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I I'm happy to to stay on. Um, I've got um, just a, a little bit more to go, and then okay. I can also just stay on for a few minutes for people who might have some follow up questions. Okay, terrific. Thank you so much. Let's keep going. Okay, um, so this is just an appeals timeline. Um, I, I'm not going to go through all these numbers just because um, it. it it you just it's hard to remember all those numbers, um, but yeah, there is a, a a process through which you file appeals for any either um, Medi-Cal decisions or um, cover California decisions. Um, and these are the last couple of slides are about the COVID nineteen protections. Um, 
So during the COVID-19 public health emergency, there are a lot of um, protections that were put in place to prevent people from um, losing access to their health insurance. Um, and so one major one was prohibition on negative medical actions while the, there has been a federal public health emergency. And during that period, which started in March of last year, medical benefits can't be terminated and a share of costs can't be added, um, even if the person no longer meets income or asset limits, um, unless the person requests to, to get out or moves or dies or transitions to long-term care. Um, but first time medical applicants can be denied or a share of costs can be assessed. So these, that protection on negative actions is for people who are already on Medi-Cal. Um, they don't have to have been on Medi-Cal since um, March, 2020, um, but as long as they have at some point been approved for Medi-Cal, then they can't be terminated um, unless, um, unless the public health emergency is over. We, we think, we, I think, um, the Department of uh, the Federal Department of um, Health and Human Services has indicated that the public health emergency would go to the end of 2020. So, um, and state actors um, are still trying to figure out how they're going to unwind that, like what will happen once they can start denying people again, and how what that's going to look like. Um, state fair hearing deadlines have been extended. It used to be 90 days um, um, for people to file. <coughs> excuse me. A state fair hearing request, but now it's been extended um, to 210 days. And for the 250% working disabled program or the children's medical program, um, they're waiving premiums right now. You have to ask for it. Um, it's not automatic, but if you um, you know can't afford the premiums, then you, you can ask for them to be waived, and they will even retroactively waive ones that um, you paid since Mar March 2020. And for Cover California. Um, the exchange is open um, throughout 2021. And this is California only. Um, so um, the federal government, I believe is, cl is closing the open enrollment um, in August. They reopened it um, earlier in the year and they were closing it in August, but California is, is keeping it open for the rest of the year, just due to the, the public health emergency. And the federal government through the American Rescue Plan Act increased the um, advanced premium tax credits <coughs> to make the health um, healthcare um, more affordable. And anyone who has received unemployment insurance at any time in 2021 will pay one dollar premiums regardless of their actual income. So that's the lowest um, the lowest amount that you can pay in premiums. So even if they end up um, making a lot more um, than the the threshold for Cover California, anyone who's been on unemployment during 2021 will pay $1 premiums for their Cover California plan. And um, um, the stimulus checks are not count counted for Cover California purposes, um, but the supplemental pandemic employment benefits are countable. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And people who had an overpayment after, re, re, um, after they reconciled their um, tax credits for 2020 don't have to pay them back. Usually we get a lot of people who have like a $20,000 debt to the IRS because they failed to update Cover California throughout the year about their income. But because it was just such a year that there was a lot of instability in employment, they just didn't make anybody pay those back. So this... Um, this is probably what you are talking about with the, um, the uninsured, COVID uninsured group. Um, I, I guess I didn't know that it was ending this week, but the COVID-19 uninsured group um, allows for free COVID-19 testing and testing related services and treatment services um, <coughs> for people who are uninsured or have private insurance that doesn't cover free COVID-19 testing and treatment or have Medi-Cal with a share of cost. So it covers all the care that um, pretty much is related to cover to COVID-19. Um, but COVID-19 treatments are already free to full scope medical beneficiaries. Okay, and these are just, um, um, I'm not gonna read those off, but the Department of Managed Healthcare um, manages a lot, most, um, most, most health plans in, cover, in, in California 
there are some plans that don't fall under their purview. They may be offered, maybe someone is employed and their employer is in a different state, um, then they, California wouldn't have jurisdiction to regulate their plans. And there are also certain plans called self-funded plans, which don't fall under their purview either. And um, um, a lot of other um, insurers are covered under the Department of Insurance and um, some plans are only regulated by the Department of Labor, the, the United States Department of Labor. So um, these are some of the um, resources that we'll, we'll direct you to us, we're the top one. Um, and then InHelp and Western Center are two organizations that provide a lot of information um, <coughs> about health programs generally. And California Advocates for Nursing Home Re um, Reform, um, their acronym is CANR, but they're kind of the experts in advising people on long-term care, um, long-term care Medi-Cal and long-term care options um, and rights for people who are in um, nursing homes or um, 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 skilled nursing facilities. So now I, I'll open it up. Um, to anyone who has questions. I know I went through that really fast and I apologize for running over, but I am, um, if someone has, a, you know, some questions that you want to ask right. right now, I'm happy to do that. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and allow participants to unmute themselves. So if participants, if you have questions, please go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and um, please feel free to ask your question at this time. And if no one feels like speaking up in the group, I can also just read out some of the questions that were put in the chat as well. Um, I just wanted to make a comment. Um, I helped my daughter apply for health insurance uh, this year. She fell off of my uh, insurance when she turned 26. And I'm not um, a complete idiot. And I do know something at my age, I'm 66 now. After three days of going over the plans uh, for her that she might be eligible for, I absolutely had to give up. We were lucky enough that she found a, a free broker and the, the broker actually found a plan for her that we never even saw after three days of looking at everything. Could you comment on people um, in that situation and how you would find a broker or someone to help with this? It's really complicated. Yeah, um, yeah, a lot of people go through brokers to sign up for a Cover California plan. I believe that CoverCalifornia.com keeps um, a list of people who are certified Cover California brokers. They have to be licensed by Cover California to enroll people in, um, in Cover California plans. Um, so that is a good option for people who really just um, want to get uh, have a real person to talk to about what plan might work best for you. Um, it can be hard to get the information that you need if just, um, you know, reading through what is available on the Covered California page. So some people do choose to go um, through a broker and that's totally, um, totally fine. It doesn't, um, it doesn't, um, you know, cost extra or anything. It's free. I have a question. Sure. Um, so I, uh, there was a period of time where I didn't have Medi-Cal or any health insurance at all. And I went to uh, General Hospital once in the emergency room, um, but never got a bill in the mail. Um, will anything happen to me? Will I have to pay more in taxes? Or I don't know because I never got a bill or anything. I was uninsured at the time, uh, but I was working at that time. And I made above the Medi-Cal threshold. Um, well, that would be something that we can definitely advise on. Um, it's kind of hard to do. Uh, we would have to ask, you know, more specific questions about your situation. We do advise on it. It, it may be something that you have some options for. Sometimes we just kind of have to tell people, um, you know, kind of how to deal with it if, if something, um, you know, if some, it, it, with medical debt, if there, if it's really, um, if it's, valid and there's no way to get any kind of insurance to pay for it, it is um, possible that um, that the providers can sue people on debt, on medical debt. And we definitely advise on that too. Um, we, you know, we can help people come up with defenses to lawsuits. So I would just recommend you call us at our um, 
you know, our health consumer center line and we can give you some individual advice based on your situation. So Vanessa had a question that actually also came up in the chat, which was about the um, clinics and hospitals that aren't um, aren't accepting Cover California. Vanessa, did you want to go ahead and ask your question? Oh, yes. Um, yeah, just so uh, my question is about Covered California plans. How the uh, I used to be on the Covered California plan probably around 2018. And um, I found out the majority of my physicians not accepted the Covered California plan. And so how's the how's the situation now for is that improved? Um, it really, really depends on the plan um, because each plan is going to have a completely different network than the next one. Um, so um, it, it's hard to say whether those provider, like whether those providers are um, accept any Medi-Cal plans. I think um, what I usually recommend is if you have some providers that um, are um, that you really want to keep, like they're they're um, what's most important to you is staying with these providers. I usually have people um, work backwards by asking the providers, either them directly or their billing department, what plans, um, if any, what cover California plans they do accept, and then try to get into that one. Because it can be hard to find a plan that covers all of your providers, but that's true with any time you get health insurance, um, because just now, um, man that's what managed care means. It means like, um, health insurance plans that have, you know, in network, out of network, um, it's, they contract with providers and it just is gonna vary a lot from plan to plan. Um, now I'm in the, the private group health insurance plan. Um, it's, uh, it's through the employee, so, uh, through the, sorry, through the employer and most of the physicians, I mean, the private clinics in San Francisco, they, they cover, but not in the case of like a covered California plan. They, they only, um, the coverage, I have to say, really low, really small in, in, at a few years ago. I don't know now. Also, um, uh, a while ago, I think it's a 2018 or 2019, I don't remember exactly when I was in Covered California and actually Medi-Cal, I think it's Medi-Cal plan. Um, one of the clinic I go to see, they, um, they require me to, they, they, you, you know, the, the physician do not see me because I'm on the Medi Medi-Cal plan. I have to go through the other uh, clinic to wait for the approval. And I'm asking if I can I just doing a cash payment for the for the conditions because I have I have some eye condition I have to see the physician right away, but they said no as they said their office office internal procedure they they, they cannot allow that. Um, this is really scared me off of the covered California plan. <laughs> Well, Medi-Cal um, Medi is different from Cover California. So there are Medi-Cal plans, but they're um, they're different than Cover California ones. For Medi-Cal specifically, the reason why a lot of providers do that is because they're afraid, because of these rules about how Medi-Cal beneficiaries cannot be billed for by Medi-Cal providers for Medi-Cal covered services. Um, they're afraid <coughs> that people just, um, you know, they'll get, stuck um, treating people and not get paid for it. And even, you know, if you're paying up front, I don't know, some of them, they're allowed to have whatever um, policies about, you know, paying cash up front that they want. Um, it's just a good idea to, to find out from your plan where you can go um, based on the network, because every network is going to be different. Some of them are just better than others. It just depends on, on, it sounds like your employer health insurance is a little better. Um, oh, it's much better. It's yeah. it's a network that is wide. Yeah, and that happens. I mean, even employer plans, they just really vary on how good they are. We get calls from people who have employer plans that are just so bad that they're unable to really access any providers and they want to get into a covered California plan because their their employment plan is so bad. It, it just there's so much variation in the quality of health plans that um, you just really it, a lot of people get into plans that 
um, they're really unhappy with. Oh, sorry, I have a cl clarification here. It's a, it's a, it's not covered California plan. It's Medi-Cal plan uh, was uh, encountered back in 2018 or 2019. Yeah, so Medi-Cal plans also, um, most people have to be in a, pl a Medi-Cal plan. Um, and, it, you know, each county in the Bay Area, most of the counties have two options. One of them is usually Anthem Blue Cross and one of them is um, it, it depends on what what county you're in. Um, San Francisco Health Plan is one is the one, other option in San Francisco. There's Alameda Alliance in Alameda County. So um, and they just like any other health plan are going to have a network. And a lot of times the ones for Medi-Cal plans are smaller because Medi-Cal plays pays lower rates than anyone else in the healthcare realm. So their networks can be smaller. You still have a right to um, you know timely access to care and if they're if you need medical care and you're not getting it then that's definitely something that you can um you know raise um and push back on and have them basically you can we get we help people um you know force their plans to let them go out of network because they haven't been able to find a provider in network and that's definitely appropriate because you do have rights as a consumer in accessing timely care uh, Amy, this is Marina. Um, I have a quick question regarding how do, in terms of the federal poverty line, when it said like under 600%, it seems such a huge percent percentage. How do, is that derived? How are these percentages determined? Um, you mean how are, how is the mm -hmm. federal poverty level determined yeah. or just why does Cover California go up to 600%? Exactly. And why 600%? It seems so huge and kind of it, off it the is, wall. <laughs> it, so for, so for the, um, mm -hmm. for the um, federal, federally across the country, it's 400% mm -hmm. is the maximum, mm -hmm. but for a household of two, Mm -hmm. um, the limit for this year is somewhere around 60, mm -hmm. um, um, dollars $68,000 between, mm -hmm. um, um, f like 400 and, you know, 401. Yeah. And so for, if you, you know, even at about $70,000 a year for two people, mm -hmm. the, especially if, with how expensive it is to live in California yeah, anywhere yeah. Mm -hmm. in health insurance, you know, as you get older, there are limits on how much, um, health insurers can charge you for health insurance, but they can charge you more the older you get. So, I mean, it's still yeah. paying $2,000 a month for health insurance, even at 600% of the poverty level is still mm. not necessarily affordable. So I think they yeah. recognize that and raised it for, for mm -hmm. California residents. I see. So that's how they adjust <coughs> accordingly, hopefully. Um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it still remains a challenge, but I was just, when I saw that 600%, under 600 percent federal poverty line i'm like whoa yeah, yeah most programs are way lower than that but california mm -hmm. starting january 2020 expanded it for because there, there was a cliff between 400 mm -hmm. and 401 or anything yeah. after 4 401 mm -hmm. um and those people end up with a huge um, tax debt if you go one dollar mm -hmm. over the cliff so this oh, kind of yeah. gives a little bit more of mm -hmm. um a gradual like Mm, um, sliding scale to prevent mm -hmm. people from ending up with huge tax debts as exactly. well. I see. Thank you very much, Amy. Mm -hmm. It looks like Vanessa has one more question. We should make this the last question. It's already three, almost 320. So Vanessa, why don't you go ahead? Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, this is a simple. My husband is in the process of appeal of a hospital bill not covered by his uh, uh, health plan. And then now it's uh, he, he, he did the grievance and then now it's denied. So he is planning to appeal. Uh, it's probably it's called the uh, it's to the De Department of the Management Health Center. Oh, um, Department of Managed Health Care. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably ex ex external review. It's yeah, he it, we are really stressed out about this uh, uh, this appeal. It's uh, how, you know, if we don't want to all do the documents by ourselves, can I can we get help from your place? 
you can definitely call us and we would provide um, at minimum legal advice. We just, we don't have the capacity to take every request for assistance um, beyond advice. Um, so it would, you could call us and do an intake. We could, um, we could definitely do advice. It's possible that we could help with the complaint, but we just can't guarantee it. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Amy. I'm going to go ahead and just put up our final, um, just our outro slide here. Um, thank everyone for coming to um, attend the San Francisco Public Library Government Information Center's program um, on Know Your Rights, Medi-Cal, Medicare, and Covered California. I want to thank Amy Freeland from the bottom of our hearts for a wonderful uh, presentation full of full of information and uh, we will make sure that the slides are saved and sent out to participants and also that the link to this um, program which was recorded uh, is is shared with um, shared with everyone so thank you again so much